Cat TV is celebrating 30 years of community media. Help support Cat TV's next 30 years by becoming a member today. Your membership will help us continue covering meaningful, local content. Thank you for supporting your local community media station. There, yep, okay. Uh, North Bennington Credit School Potential Committee for September 14th, 2022 order. And uh, I've seen no public. I'm going to skip public comments. Uh, we don't have a treasurer here. I don't know why that is actual. Um, so we'll skip to finance and uh, treasurer's reports were included for two months, July 31st treasurer report and August 31st treasurer's report. And the, let's see, if you look at the August 31st treasurer's report and you look at the uh, bottom line, See, right. I think we have to wait for for some of the payments. We have to if you tonight we're going to have to wait for the states general state support grant to come in. But that's been a pattern for the past few years anyway, and hopefully they are timely so as they have been sometimes as delayed. Um, because uh, you see an Indian account balance of 71,800, <clears throat> which isn't going to pay off. No. Sure. So uh, that's the treasurer's report. And uh, I wish Doug or Mary were here, but for some reason they're not here. They didn't tell me that they weren't. She did. She, she mentioned that she was going to be out of town. Okay, uh, but Doug's another story. I don't know why he's not here. I'll have to check with him. At any rate, that's, that's the story, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, they're working it out with uh, the imposts about payments when the payments go out in order to cover our bills. Um, we'll skip the budget stat file for now. And uh, we'll move on to what's our next uh, next item? Uh, the consent agenda, and that includes minutes from June fourteenth, which was our last uh, public meeting, and the warrants, current warrants for this month. Um, Um, so, I guess I would uh, request a motion to accept both the minutes and the uh, warrants. Let's review the warrants. No motion if you need to. Sorry, what? No motion to accept the, the okay. agenda. But let's, uh, let's look at the warrants. All right. Got two copies. No, there are two different warrants. One for September 14th, which is the current one. Um, it has these sheets come in on them. Okay, there's one very large warrant. 
Well, actually, there are several. Because we skipped two, two months worth of meetings, there's the July 14th move meeting uh, warrants for that and the August 12th meeting warrants for that, uh, which I approve those on the basis of my authority given by the board to approve warrants off, off schedule and when we're not uh, having meetings. Uh, so <clears throat> the one for the one for uh, August was uh, consisted of the village school tuition and uh, rebate payments uh, to the village of North Bennington. That was two hundred thirty four thousand seven hundred forty nine fifty dollars basically, and then the, the Previous month for July was just the payment to the village school, 181000 And uh, those payments have been made. For this month's warrants uh, total $256,350 in round numbers. Uh, this is uh, Payment to Alarm Sun Limited for additional work pursuant to the uh, upgrading of the fire alarm system. Then tuition payments to Highland Hall for four students. Uh, payment to Mentrone Paving, $22.75 for correcting the sidewalk deficiency on the west side of the entrance to the school. Uh, payments to Sacred Heart for four students. Payments to Southshire for 14 students. And payments to the Village School for 109 students. That totals 230, 256, excuse me, 350. And there's an additional warrant for the 14th of September, which is payment to Lori for court clerk services and payment to CAT TV for uh, our monthly access fees for August. August. And the payment to the uh, additional, the final payment from the alarms unlimited uh, work on the uh, fire control panel, which we had contracted for at the end of, uh, in June, back in June. Okay, so. Ray, did, did anybody uh, with respect to the pavement project go and see how that- I did. Managed I last- I looked at it after one of these rains last week and seemed fine. There's there's a slight little concavity in it, but there, you know, the, the film of water is just an eighth of an inch or something like that. So it's, it flows through yep. and goes down. The catch basin that it all is supposed to go to, um, probably next year we ought to try to see if we can drop that a little bit to get a little more pitch yep. so that that water gets there a little more positively than it has been doing. But that's next year. Yep. And uh, as as you may know, well, you, you probably all know because I think I included you. You were included in the email from Terrence. The, the state is going to require us to add on to the fire alarm system, a voice system of some sort, which I, I don't really understand, but um, I don't think we're going to be able to fight that. So uh, we'll figure out the cost, work on that for next year. So uh, if there are any questions about the warrants or any questions about the minutes, Speak up. 
Do we need a motion here? Yes, I think Kiernan made a motion. Did you know? No. For warrant 10 minute, for the warrant, including the consent agenda, yes. Um, I'll second it. Okay, thanks. Any discussion or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, aye. Raise your hand, perhaps. Okay, that's unanimous. So go back to the agenda. There are no policies. Superintendent's report. This is Welcome to our new building. I hope uh, you'll maybe next month you'll all come uh, and see it. We're not ready for tours yet. You're, you know, you're sitting and seeing the most completed part of it. We do plan on doing an open house once everything that's been ordered for what's behind the wall, uh, where most of the staff is working. Uh, and it's a very different setup because there are people in cubicles. You know, I, I, I'm going to get to the point that I'm going to feel that if they're, like, especially at night. They need to be acknowledged that uh, and, and informed that there may be a, a group coming through the building because it's not like things are in offices, things are out. So I, right. we have to develop the protocols for how that works so people know that, you know, careful what you're leaving out at night. Not, not there's any, there's secure locking cabinets and secure rooms for, you know, anything that's critical, but, you know, everything from your personal photo, maybe you don't want it out as the public comes touring through your space yeah. or something like sure. that. Sure, it's an invasion of your privacy. Right. So, and, and the privacy of any records that you have. But, you know, I want to thank particularly the tech staff for going through a lot of people frustrated with technology, including board members because of the email transformation that happened at the same time we switched from a uh, Outlook to uh, going to a Google base, getting away from servers, going to the cloud, all good stuff. But, it, you know, it, it, the learning curve was tough and not everything happened at the same time. The move didn't happen exactly the, the you know, our target was always July 1 that we we're going to move. But it was more mid-July because you are at the mercy of when movers are available and scheduling them. We changed our phone system because we couldn't take our old phone system with us and it was somewhat antiquated and it was always, whether we moved or not, on schedule to be replaced. So it is uh, now a voice over internet phone system, which gives us a lot of capabilities that we didn't have before. But of course, things like our fax machines no longer work with the new phone system. And some of our schools were struggling with public address systems, working with a phone system, certain parts had to be changed. and. And for one point, the public had trouble calling in here. And then once it did, so there was like a day or two that we were operating pretty much on cell phones and putting up a, you know, a, a notice on our website that we knew we were having phone system, uh, system problems. And um, that it complicated that all the, all the elementary schools, middle school and high schools phone calls had to come through here and then get routed out. So like our receptionist was like, basically, if you want to go to Shasta Elementary School, then she had to punch it through to it. That's been correct because that part didn't come in until like August 22nd. Uh, so, the, you know, the move was complicated by the change in the, the uh, our email platform change in our uh, phone system. Copier contract expired at the same time, went with a different vendor on copiers that are going to, that is giving us, you know, the fax capability through the copier that then will convert it to email. So a much more secure and safer system. But again, nothing worked probably on the first day that we needed it to work. But uh, I appreciate everyone's patience. I know board members, uh, Amy was struggling communicating with some of you. Emails bounced back, particularly if you were using a personal email behind your SVSU address. So we are switching to a system that you are going to have to use your SVSU email address. And a lot of that has to do with, you know, we're a public entity. So our emails are all recoverable under the Freedom of Information Act. Right. And if you start using your personal email, then we can't access that if there is a request that comes in. So uh, I don't know, that's, it's, I, I think 
maybe I'm a little naive on this, but I think it has gone as well as it could have gone. Sure, there's some things that might have went a little smoother, but um, it's, you know, as a reminder, let's remember why we moved. We, we, we had a, a nice location, but the building was substandard. It was not accessible. It had no accessibility to the bottom floor or any bathroom facilities on the bottom floor, which was really, uh, you know, an issue, an American with disability issue for that building. Uh, it did not have a ventilation system. It, it had a, a, a really unbalanced heating system that allowed that you'd be in uh, some rooms in the winter running in an air condition to keep from sweating to death. And in other rooms, you're, you're, you're uh, wearing a winter coat while you're on your computer. So, and, and the square footage, the way it was designed, just, well, if you've come to our meetings and you've used one of the bathrooms in that building, you know that it was still very much an elementary school bathroom. So, uh, and I, I keep repeating myself to all these boards just to remember, I mean, we did look at renovating that building and to make both floors accessible and usable and meeting all current codes. Uh, the estimate five years ago was, uh, $3.75 million. And no one could see putting that kind of money in that building. And we we leased this facility, just to remind everyone, because the SVSU, uh, SVSUs, SUs are not in the state of Montana, not allowed to own property. We have to, we have to lease it. So that's how we got here. And I'm thinking like. You, you, if you go by and you look outside, you'll see like boxes piled up in some of the windows because there are not some window, not all the window treatments are here yet. And morning or afternoon sun, depending on what side of the building you're on, is uh, you can't see your computer uh, screen from the glare. So those should be here. I'm hoping in another two weeks and uh, the co all the new copiers will be hooked up, hopefully in that same time period. And then we'll be ready to... Uh, to show out, uh, show the, the public the, the new location. All right. Well, I have not been intimately associated with what happened, but I can I certainly have sympathy with the work that went into getting this. I think it's nice that you're all, you all freeze up. Anybody hear me? We can, can hear, hear you. It. You heard me? Yeah. I don't think they can, though. I right. I'm thinking maybe they got some other glitches they got to work with there. But anyway, I'm glad that they are actually in, um, you know, they're in the community now. They're right in town. I think that's one benefit. Going back? Yeah, maybe so. Yeah, we can yeah. hear Kim. Are you there? She can hear us. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, thanks. What happened I there? Know. I have no idea what happened. You, Matt, Matt said I froze, and we said no, we could hear you say that, and then right. everybody yeah. froze, yeah. and then we all got kicked out and joined back in. Seems like you got a little more work there to do, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> all wow. part of the process. But anyway, I'm glad that you're all back into the central community. You know, um, I think it's good that you're all in in Bennington proper um, as an organization. So we did do an activity last Friday, a little bit of fun. We did um, a passport event. I um, had a uh, Katie West, our public information coordinator, put it together, printed out passports with like area businesses in downtown. And we did a, a teams that then went out and had to go to, you know, this particular vendor and get their passport stamped so that everyone kind of got familiar with the surroundings a little. And then they had a little reception when we got back. So 
for a little fun welcome to the uh it was called it was dubbed summer in the city even though we were uh, <laughs> closer to fall when we actually did it but uh, yeah it, it's just a kind of welcome to the neighborhood event you know? great i'm going to introduce them to downtown or downtown and i say i'm hearing positives about that but from everything from walking to go get a coffee to uh just taking a walk during uh, during your lunch hour and uh, in a different environment i met jim he was counting all the advantages of how close it was to go get lunch or like for me Okay, um, I'm assuming you're done. Yes. Okay. So uh, my report should be brief. Um, I've got an order here, but I'm going to reverse it. The meeting structure number C. Um, I just meant mostly time. We are we sticking to six thirty on Wednesdays or? Do you, is there any reason to change that from other board members? I don't have any particular druthers about it. So. That works for me uh, so far. Kim? Yes, me too. Okay. Karen? Yep. Okay, so we'll stick to 6.30 and uh, it's the second. Even though we apologize, the agenda said 6.45 tonight. Which right. Ran out. I have no idea how that happened. The, the, Zoom, the Zoom link said 6.30, but it wasn't until I sat down and right. opened and looked at this. Right. Anyway, I think we'll, uh, we'll get that straightened out. So it's 6.30. Uh, summer facility work, I'm going in reverse order here. Um, the main things that we accomplished were to we'll go with the first one to be finished, which was uh, the the drain that goes through the library in the southeast corner of the library uh, from the roof uh, was correct was repiped uh, by Hayden Plumbing and. Uh, we didn't even need to uh, rebuild the roof, the ceiling structure. Nice. So uh, I don't know what the bill was, so we haven't paid it yet. So uh, that's something that has to be uh, forwarded to me from uh, the village school. The next thing that we accomplished was um, Well, the last thing we accomplished was the drainage at the west entrance to the building. And that was a last minute thing that, uh, because we couldn't do the, um, the drainage work on the west side of the building that we wanted to do, you, that required excavation, Kurt's uh, excavator was unable to uh, be able to do the project till September, which would in interfere with the start of school. Uh, so we're postponing that to next June. But uh, as part of that, we had talked about getting this little uh, little puddle forming area of the sidewalk just before the foyer entrance uh, fixed so that we could uh, be a little safer in that area and get the water drainage promoted to going over to the catch basin. And uh, Joe Mintrone uh, was able to fit it in. It, it, he came and uh, did a very good job of inspecting it and studying the slope and coming up with a simple solution, I think, to that, that issue. And uh, there's one other thing that's escaping me. I should have that written down. Um, there was one other thing that we did that was substantial, not huge, but substantial. 
I'm sorry, I can't. The remember. fire alarms, Ray, maybe? The fire alarm. Yes. We thank you. About it. Yes. Thank you. Ding, ding, ding. We talked about it in the pre meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, so that that got done, and all the uh, uh, the individual alarms uh, in the gym area and other places got changed over. So we have a functioning system that's up to code, except now they want us to put in this voice feature. Jesus. Yeah. Ray, did we get a one-year uh, deferment on that, or was it? Yes, to, we have to get it in before next year. That's not even a year, but that's. I'm curious what what Tim thinks. Uh, I mean, not that yeah. it matters in terms of what the state says, but. I, I think. I mean, I don't know that it makes any differences to the safety. I guess someone somewhere has decided it will. And it right. literally just says, you know, fire, 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 and, and exit the building, or, you know, there's different versions of it. Um, you know, some of them will also, you know, tell you that it's a, a carbon monoxide issue versus a fire and still tell you to ex exit the building or whatever. So um, I don't know that this upgrade makes a significant difference in the safety, but um, silly, but it's necessary. Certainly, it's it's yeah. certainly, you know, going to make it um, clear to everybody what's going on. Yeah, my concern about it is it will confuse small children because who are used to depending on their classroom teacher for controlling the situation, and that's the way it should be. That's a very good point. Yeah, I, uh, but, you know, I'm not going to fight that battle. No, that, that's, that's not one you're going to win. No. So that's that's in the picture for next summer because it has to get done. Uh, also in the picture for next summer is to try to deal with the drainage swale on the west side. Yes. And uh, I told uh, Eric Martin, who runs Kurtz Excavating, that, uh, because he gave us price that we, we would go with him next June as soon as possible after school's out and uh, I need to maintain that contact to make sure he keeps it in the schedule for us. Yeah, I think that's really important to wrap this up yep. and um, <clears throat> I think that will help a great deal with my anxiety about the uh, music room. Right. Well, we've, we've sort of taken care of the sidewalk as a possible source of water in the music room. Yeah, and we put the stone back in place. That seemed like yep. a, that was probably the most important element we we could do. But uh, I still wonder about the that west area because the drainage should be positive toward the catch basins. Yep. Yeah, those window wells are not great. No, and I I would say that uh, I've spoken with. Uh, the Mason, um, Matt, who uh, was a longtime resident, and uh, he's he did some. He's the one who put the stone back in place, which he did for nothing. And he oh. is in, intent on working on the wells, the window wells themselves, concrete structures, as uh, when he has time, as another uh, just contribution from a community member. Wow. Uh, in lieu of taxes. But no, it, it, in lieu of uh, it being in the tax bill, it did things. So. Right. Charging us. Wow. Uh, <clears throat> that's Matt Serdam I'm talking about. Serdam, Amy. yeah. Amy's husband. So uh, that's facility work that I'm aware of at the moment this year and for next year. There may be other facility work for next year. We'll have to keep studying that. Uh, finally, we get to enrollment picture. Yeah. <clears throat> Let me find my. Okay. <clears throat> so <clears throat> we 
we budgeted for 40 students in institutions other than the village school in our budget for this year. At the moment, we have 37. Uh, we have, uh, count them up. Seventeen in S V U E S P. Oh no, sorry, plus two more. That's nineteen in S V U E S P. We have four at Sacred Heart. We have none at Grace. We have four at Highland Hall, and we have uh, fourteen in South Shore. Is that up to thirty-seven? Thank you. Uh, uh, what I don't know is the village school number. We're paying at 109 at the moment, but I don't know. I know we, we had some uh, late additions or arrivals. And, uh, so, so it should be 108 on Friday. 108? Yeah. Okay. All right. And that's including those the children who came in toward the end of the summer there. That is including everybody up to date at the moment. Okay. Yes. That's for right. this this coming year. As of this moment, but um, we still have variation for the next couple of weeks. There's always interesting things that happen. Right. And and the next count doesn't happen until October 10 or something like that. The, so the, official, the count. official count. Yeah, that's the official count. And then we'll do another one in, in February, the start of right. February. Right. Okay, so 145, that's slightly below last year, one or two. I'd have to look it up. I know my recollection is these numbers is. Uh, you mean, you mean uh, tuitioning okay. out? What? Tuitioning out, Ray? 45 is is a couple no, less. We had, we had uh, I said 145, that's K-6 students. Uh, right. The last year, I think we had 148. Okay. That's my recollection. Okay. And then the pre-K numbers, I don't know at the moment. I did ask for a tally from Jim, but Kosis, but uh, he, he needed to get that from uh, the early ed, ed people. They have to respond to things, which not surprising. I've got a lot of work to do. Does Lori have any in, insight with that? I don't want to put her on the spot because it's not her job to report. But well, I know, um, you know, I know what we have at the village school, but they're not all village school of North Bennington or village of North Bennington residents or North Bennington graded school residents. So, and I'll usually get that report too pretty soon. I did get an, a letter from, or an email from Megan, who's the new director of early education, um, that she was going to report out on that next week. Okay. So I can pass that along. Okay. We, don't, we don't hear from them uh, too often, but she did send a lengthy email with some changes in early education coming up this year. Okay. Well, I, I expect it to be in, in the neighborhood of 30, but I don't, that's just on past history. Yeah, it's usually 30, 33, 32, 35, so, yeah, something like 32. Yeah. Our pre-K at the village school is full, but again, they're not all North Bennington graded school residents, right. so. Okay, so um, once I have those figures, I'll put them out to everybody. I, I think I forwarded this list of the uh, tuitioners outside the village school, <coughs> you guys. Um, and uh, I don't know of any I haven't heard it. I, as far as I know from Jim Kosis, uh, the, those are 
solid numbers at the moment. Those, those, uh, the names and numbers that I have for those children. Of those, there are four, five, six, six sixth graders. So, um, we may see a drop next year, or we may see just a refill. I don't know. And uh, I have really nothing else to talk about. So, um, the, the, we do have another, if you have a comment, any, anybody that's on screen, uh, you may make it. I, I'd just be curious if Tim, if Tim wanted to speak to the, um, the beginning of the, the, the new year or, or not, that's. No, I'm, I'm happy to say it's, it's been, um, I think the, the healthiest start we've had in a number of years, which is just nice to, to be in that kind of an environment again. Um, you know, a lot of our restrictions have been lifted and we're sort of, still we're still dealing with it we've already had you know cases of students out and things like that with covid um but uh it's a definitely a different experience than it was in the past and i think folks are just happy to be in person um this year the opening day was a huge difference in that we were able to hold our our parade and have families there and we had the barbecue outside and um, it was just, it was much more celebratory than it's been in, in a long time, which was just great. Um, and I'm just excited for, for those kinds of things to continue this year. And, um, and we'll just see where it takes us, but it's, it's always, it's always a push to get this started, but the staff has done just an incredible job as always, um, including Lori and kindergarten and the pre-K and all everybody in between, um, pre-K and sixth grade, um, to make this all work. Um, I think we have a great group of kids um, this year and just a, a wonderful group of um, staff and, and faculty supporting them. So I'm, I'm excited for the year ahead. I, I was very much, I was Sorry, happy yeah. to see the, uh, the uh, social media on the, on the first day parade and stuff. I so wish I could, could have been there. Um, but yeah. Looked like everybody was finally having a having a normal beginning to the school year, and uh, I kind of missed missed out on the hot dogs and hamburgers, but yes, maybe and next year. I was there not for the yeah. hot dogs and hamburgers, <laughs> but March. Um, but one other thing is just it's it's just wild to see you know our population how many of the kids and families had not experienced it before. Right. So for so many of our population, it was actually the first big first day celebration again. They hadn't seen it for a number of years. And so it, it was it was a new thing for for so many more than it ever is before. So that was that was a great, great thing to see the faces and how excited the families were about the whole experience. Yep. Was there an activity before the, the parade? Um uh, we we do typical sort of field day activities and things like that. In the past, we've sometimes had an entertainer or or something like that. We didn't do that this year. We just wanted to start a, start out a little softer. Um, but we will have um, a residency with Troy Wonderly again this year. Excellent. Um, so I'm excited about that. And okay. hopefully we will start to have, you know, fantastic Fridays again and things like that in the, in the coming weeks and months ahead. Yeah. Yeah, the Troy Wonderly thing, that's that's always a excellent experience. For nice. And uh, real real fantastic Fridays as well. Yeah. All right. Well. Hey Ray, could I just <laughs> ask a question? If I can get my dog to be quiet. Um so in the past, excuse me, someone's just at the We'll wait. Yep, we'll wait. At the door. Huh? Go check the door. We'll wait. Okay. Um, so in the past, Ray, um, you or Jim have 
um, uh, Jim Kosis has have given us a list of the children at the different schools. Like, you know, I, I sent a list out. So you sent a list of the names then? Yes, I did. I um, think I, you... I, I believe I forwarded it to the whole board and you. Okay, no. I don't think I saw that, but well, but so it might you. but it might be there. Could you just resend that? I know yeah, we found sure. some errors, um, you know, in years past, and at no one's fault. I mean, people have moved and all that sort of thing in between. And yeah. but th this is the K six group, not not the pre K six. So I don't have those. I don't have that list. Yeah. Right. I'd like to, the the K six group would be awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I saw that. <clears throat> right. Well. Well, then um, ma maybe you should send it to all of us again. Yes, <laughs> Thanks, please. Ray. Yeah. Yeah, please send it. I didn't get it either. Okay. I Thanks. will. I will do it before I leave here. Uh, but I could consider us adjourned. I guess. Thank you. I'll for make that attending. motion if necessary. Otherwise, good night, you all. Yeah, no motion necessary. Thank you. CAT TV is celebrating 30 years of community media. Help support CAT TV's next 30 years by becoming a member today. Your membership will help us continue covering meaningful, local content. Thank you for supporting your local community media station.